إننا ما نتعلم التعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والدعاء للهدى والدلالة على الخير والحث والتمسك بكتاب الله والسنة رسول الله والدعاء مرضاة الله وكل بثوابه سبحانه وتعالى الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد النوافي نعمة هو يكافئ مزيد والصلاة والسلام على خير الأنام على آله وصحبه وسلم We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise is worthy of beneficent bestower of bounties and a benefactor of mercy and we ask our Lord most high to send salutations and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam ma'abad qala mu'alif rahimahullah radiyallahu anhu wa ankum nafa'na bihi wa bikum wa iyaka wa tajassusa wa huwa talab al-waqfi ala awrat al-muslimin wa ma'asihim al-mastura qala alayhi salam alayhi salatu wa salam من تتبع عورة أخيه المسلم تتبع الله عورته حتى يفضحه ولو في جوف بيته. سلام خلود. The way of spying which is seeking to know the private affairs of the other Muslims and their hidden sins. The Prophet has said may may blessings and peace be upon him. The one who seeks out the secrets of his brother a Muslim will, will have God seeking out his secrets until he expels it, exposes him even should he be in the depths of his house. All right. So this goes to that point, the points we were just talking about. And that's why it follows on from what Imam Haddad was saying. All right. So this, this, this is continuing from there that what is the reason why we're doing da'wah? Right? Proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when that intention changes, what happens is this. We become suspicious of everyone. Hey, what's so-and-so doing? Oi, what's that person doing? Hey, let's go find out. Why don't we troll them? Now it's trolling, eh? You don't have to even control. Trolling, what are you trolling people for? Why are you trolling someone? What's the reason you're trolling someone? Is it to give them that way? It's all right then. To see what they're like, what their personality is, what they... What the interests are, okay, but if it's to troll them to find out what they're doing wrong, what whatever, whatever the alaqat, the relationships are maybe not proper, etc., etc., then it's haram. The Allah says in the Quran, Wala tajassasu, do not spy upon one another. And the Prophet of Allah he says in this hadith, he says, Whoever uh tabba, what does he say? Like you are What's the hadith say? Yeah, okay. The tabba is to follow. Tabba means to follow. So the one who's constantly following others around, spying to find out what's going on with them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose that person's awra, in other words, that person's shame, if you want, shameful and indecent deeds as the case might be, or humiliate that person, even in the middle of his or her, or his or her own home. And subhanAllah, there was a gentleman, a brother, mashallah, we knew him very, very, very well. Very well. Close friends, close, like we're family with the guy. And he's, what is his hadith every time when he comes? He's a top guy. Gives fi sabilillah, built I don't know how many masajid, how many ulama on his hands, he gave him money and whatever else. Mashallah. But what's his big problem? Tongue. Every time we visit, this person, that person, that person, this person, Ya Am, Ya Haj, Ya Habibi. And with SubhanAllah, that same hadith, that same hadith used to say to him all the time. And then what, oh, the, his biggest pet peeve was, his, you know, the daughters that, that don't do what their dad do, and then this daughter, this and that daughter, that. And after years and years and years, what happened? His own daughter, his favorite daughter, the daughter he used to spoil the most, what did she do? She eloped. That's the word, isn't it? Muslims, they're all Muslims, these people. Eloped. One day they go looking at one morning, where is she? Didn't come for breakfast. Gone. And the guy's respectable. You know, like I said, he's got money and everything. When Allah blazed the Wajal, what happened to him? Why? Allahu Alam, Allah knows better. But from what? Following this person's doing that. And that person, we should look at your own sins. Okay? We get that one? Not our business. So go back to what we were just saying earlier about trying to imp implement Islam on every person. Don't worry about that. Implement it in your own life and call. Let people make up their own minds. The days of ikrah, the days when the ulama ruled that, and this is a ruling, 
in, in uh, Ahl al-Zimma, which is the non-Muslims who lived in the Muslims, they were allowed to build their houses higher than the Muslims because of some of the madahib. And that's ishtihadat. They, they have the, because they say, because the al-izzatu lillahi wa lirasulihi wa lilmu'mineen, that the honor is for Allah and His Prophet and the, and the believers, and the non-believers' houses shouldn't be higher. Or they had to walk in a separate part or wear distinctive clothing from one another. Discrimination. Right? At the time, it was all right. Not as bad as other discrimination from other nations at that time, but they were just <coughs> in slavery and whatever else was going on. So it's not right according to our standards today. And that's how the deen is. We have to apply the deen. In other words, the nasus or the ulama have to apply the, the, the Quran and the hadith as it applies to today. Not as it applied, that's probably 700 years ago. Big difference. If we judged any nation by how they were set, don't, don't worry about 700 years ago. 1969, how long ago is that? Okay, let's say 70 years. 70 years ago, if we judged America, the United States of America, how would we judge it? And worse than an apartheid nation. And slave, slavery is what built America. The, 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 the killing of the, uh, the, the Native American is what built America. Australia is the same. What, white Australia policy? As Aboriginal people were not even considered animals. When I hold the blouse of a so any nation, if we look back at their history, we're going to find things like that in amongst the, the and it's same with us, same with us. With ishtihadat, that's the the um, I suppose the legal uh, um, legal reasoning, the jurisprudence of the scholars, rather than what's in the Quran. There's no none of that business in the Quran, and there's none of that business in the Hadith. What does the Prophet say? There's no difference between no one's better an Arab or a non-Arab, a black or a white except by the taqwa of Allah. So it's not in a but things develop when you have power, and that's what it's based on. It becomes injustice. So did the Muslims do injustice on earth? What do you reckon? Of course they did. Otherwise Allah wouldn't take away the Khalifa from us. He wouldn't have taken away the rule of you know, a third or two-thirds of the world as the Ottomans had. Wouldn't. But when we do injustice, Allah's going to say, come on, mate, that's enough. Put someone else, let someone else have a go. Okay, so... That's what I'm talking about when I say that. Don't worry about implementing your Islam on the whole world. Forget about that. Not the time for it. Implement it in yourself and call to it. Let people make up their own minds because that's the time in which we live in. And that's what he says. He says, uh, he says, وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْمَعْصِيَةَ إِذَا سُتِرَتْ لَمْ تَضُرْ إِلَّا مُرْتَكَبَهَا إِذَا ظَهَرَتْ وَلَمْ تُغَيِّرْ عَمَّا ضَرَرُهَا a concealed sin, concealed sins harm only its dollar, but when it becomes public and is not stopped, its harm becomes general. All right. So if someone's doing something to the Muslim, that's not any idea. So they say a story about Sayyidina Omar. I don't know how true it is, but it's a story they say. There was a man drinking, and he was singing, <coughs> and he heard him, and he jumped over the wall, and he said, I'm going to arrest you. And the guy said, I don't know if it's a true story. I don't think Sayyidina Omar would do that, but as an example. Uh, and then, he, then the guy said, "Well, you know, you know. Firstly, you, you, you made me scared. And you jumped the wall. That's not that's not illegal. You're trespassing. That's illegal. So, you know, go back to what you're doing." So, the the Muslims. That's our tradition from the beginning. Don't worry about that. Let's talk about zina. All right. So, had the zina if someone does adultery in 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 Islamic law, the punishment is death. If they if they're married, and they do zina, someone does adultery then the punishment is death. But the condition upon the application of the punishment is four upright witnesses have to see everything that went on, including penetration. Have to identify both people's private parts and say, yes, it was those people doing it. How likely is that to happen? Let me tell you how many times it's happened since the time of the Prophet of Allah Twelve. Twelve. Is that a lot? That's hardly any. Zero. Right? Yeah, it's zero. And statistically, it's nothing. In 1400 years, in the, the millions and now billions of Muslims that's occurred, 12 times that's ever been happened. 12 times. And this whole business about she became pregnant, she was raped, that doesn't, that's not part of Islam. Some woman gets raped and she's pregnant, what's that got to do with zina? Nothing to do with it. She claims she's raped, that's it. She claims she's raped. Unless someone, iqrar, they admit to it. So the point of that ruling is what Imam Haddad is talking about. If something happens in private, let it stay in private. But when, but when 
adultery or fornication becomes public, like you might say pornography, for example, then it's a problem. And is pornography a problem? A massive issue. A humongous issue. And we're only starting to understand how bad of an issue it is since the internet came out 10 odd years ago. Right? So that's what Islam is protecting against. The person who drinks, let them drink in their own home. If they're going to drink, drink in your own home. Don't hurt anyone. When's it a problem? When they're drinking openly because it encourages other people to drink and etc, etc, etc. So even when we're talking about the public version of Islam or even the rules of Islam, there's the public and the private. What people do in their own homes is their own business, so to speak. It's between them and Allah. That's what I mean by their own business. I'll let Allah judge that person. But why does Islam judge the action that is on the road, on the street, that everyone can see that's public? Because it affects other human beings. It affects other people. So that's, that's the, the differentiating factor between the two. And for us, right, we live in a time where we can't change that. We live in a time where we can't change what goes on openly, publicly. All we can do is call people to action because we live in a time of so-called democracy. And when I say that, I mean public opinion. Public opinion is what counts. That's what makes politicians do what they do. That's what make, make now they've got, you know, computers and internet and TV, what is it, digital TV. They know exactly what we're all doing. And not only that, this, I read this amazing thing. Amazing. How about how, how, how people target the store, whatever it is, like the department store. In America, they wanted to, they, 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 the research said that the best person to get is the, is the woman who's pregnant. And she's a, and she's she's in her second trimester. That's how that's how specific their research was. This is in two thousand and three, two thousand and four, right? So if she's had the child too late, if she's in her first, she's not really worried about things, and the second trimester, the beginning of her second trimester. So what they did was they did research because people, you know, when you do the loyalty cards and you buy things on credit card and you buy things online, they link up all these things through the through the internet and they find out what's going on. So what, what are the main indicating factors? Um, so, so, sort of certain types of moisturizing creams that go on stomachs. What else was it? Wipes and things like that. They worked out exactly what it was. And then in America, what they do, they, they'd send coupons out to people. Oh, 10% off moisturizing cream, 10% off whatever. So one father came in and he was irate. Now the manager doesn't know what's going on. This is all head office, back end stuff. He came, they came in, one father came in, he goes, my teenage daughter, you're sending her you know, coupons for for you know, pregnancy stuff or whatever else and whatever else and he went off and the manager said, look, I'm really, really sorry, I didn't, you know, it's nothing to do with me, it comes from head office, whatever. And he reported to head office and they said, look, just give the guy a call and apologize again. So a couple of weeks later, he gives the, the father a call and the father goes, I owe you an apology. There were things going on in my house that I didn't know were going in my house, my daughter's pregnant. So Target knew <laughs> his daughter was pregnant and before he did. Oh, right, so that's the type of thing that's going on through 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 the internet, that's you know that that's that's the world we live in today. So we've got to take those factors into account. Even, even um, say you are looking up something. So say I was looking like online shopping. If you were to go on Facebook or, or any other site, you will see pop ups of the same site of exactly what you're looking at. Right. So that's the world we live in. So we've got to take the, those things in, into consideration. We've got to you know that's that's we've got to. You, you are more able to take those things into consideration than I am because you guys grew up with that stuff. To me, it's still foreign. Like, yeah, whatever, I use it, but I'm not really into it. It's just one of those things. My phone, calling someone, yeah, sending someone a message, yeah, because I grew up with that. But all the other stuff, yeah, I use it, but if I didn't use it, it would have been no loss to me whatsoever. It wouldn't make any difference at all. Zero. None. <laughs> but for yourselves, because you grew up with it, if it was not there, be like a part of your lives was missing because when you were young that's the type of thing that you grew up with so that's got to be factored in, into the equation we'll, we'll finish off the chapter and so it says wa alayka idha tafahashu idha tafahasha dhuhur al ma'asi wal munkarati fi mawd'in anta bihi wa ayasta min qubul al haqqi bil uzlati fa in fa فَإِنَّ فِيهَا السَّلَامَةَ أَوْ بِالْهِجْرَةِ إِلَى مَوْضِعٍ آخِرٍ وَهِيَ أَوْلَى 
fa inna al adhaba idha nazala ala mawdi'in ya'um al khabith wa at tayyib wa yakuna lil mu'min alladhi lam yaqsir fi nusrati dinillahi kafaratun wa rahmatun wa li ghayrihi 'iqaban wa niqma wallahu a'lam in evidence when you live and you despair of true, truth being accepted then isolate yourself for this in, for this in this lies safety or, or immigrant to another place which action is better Allah is best is that it? you finish it? no for when chastisement for when chastisement for on a place it includes both the wicked and the good to the believer who was neglectful, ne neglectful in supporting God's religion. It is an expiation and a mercy, but, but for others it is a chastisement and for an, an, an affliction, and God knows best. Alright, so well, I, I don't think we're at that time yet because people are still accepting truth. So that's why it's so important. Half one. It's so important for our voices to be out there. It's so important for us to be there in spirit, to be there in mind, to be, in, be there in body, to be there in action, to be there in word. Because there still is the capacity for that. So the fact that everyone has an opinion or it has its negatives, but it also has its positives for us. That means your opinion can be heard. And just because someone doesn't, you know, like on Facebook, you don't get 50 likes, it doesn't mean people aren't watching. People are scared. People are scared to like something about Islam. Or if you're a Muslim, they're scared to like what you say or, or be associated with you because that's, that's what the mainstream, you know, the corporate media is telling people. Muslims and Islam is scary. And then you've got, you know, uh, countering CVE, countering violent extremism and, and CT, counter-terrorism. And you've got all these, these things that... And, and look, people aren't dumb. People realise that, that these, some of these guys that are... That are um, some guy put up, I can't remember which one, one of the one of the terrorist guys, he put up something on his Facebook page for about, maybe it was about supporting ISIS or whatever, for three or four days, got 10 years in prison. Uh, like, people are not dumb. They realise, yeah, it's bad. You can't do that. But there's, that's scary. Just for putting something up, you know, you, and people do worse than that. And people rape people and do and they, they get three or four years. And they've got criminal histories and whatever else. Pedophiles and that get less than that. I mean, I was a nice little show. So, you know, there's... And people aren't dumb, they see that and they go, oh, look, man, I don't want to even be anywhere near that business. But it doesn't mean that in their minds or their hearts that they're not affected. It doesn't mean that. And that effect is Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and someone was telling me the other day, one of their friends who was totally against Islam, mashallah, became Muslim last week. They accepted. They were totally against it. And after reading and finding out and doing their own research, and don't forget that the resources are out there for people these days. They're out there. People can learn about their din. And so if a time comes where the truth isn't accepted, not where you're not accepted, not where you what you believe is, but the truth, the people are not accepting truth, and and fahash and fahsha, indecency and lewdness is, is, has become the general rule in a place, and, and you, yasta, yani, you've kind of tried and there's no chance of changing that circumstance, then would be the time to leave. Then would be the time to and that's what happened, for example, with the, with the Habib of, of Yemen, that when they were in Iraq, the, the scholars we learned from, when they were in Iraq, there was a big fitna between the Shia, and what they know became Shia and everyone else, and Ahl al-Bayt, you know, the, the, the relatives of the Prophet, and so they left Iraq. They went from Iraq to, to Jazeera al-Arabiya, to Arabia, and then they, they couldn't stay in Mecca for too long, and they came to Yemen. And they've been in Yemen for you know, 1100 odd years. Because... In the place where they were, if you were from Ahl al-Bayt, you had to become Shia. That's it. If you weren't Shia and you were from Ahl al-Bayt, there's big problems for you. So that was the fitna of that time. Now, when I was in the fitna of our time is all the fitna. Any fitna you can think of is around. All the prophets, all the fitna they had, that's the end of times. All the trials and tribulations they had from magic to health to, you know, because look what people are doing. People, I don't know, um, someone was saying the other day, he went to see his sister and... She was breathtaking, and then his mum was saying, oh, her eyelashes are fake, her eyes are fake, her nose is fake, she's got thingo in her cheeks, and she's got thingo in her... It's just 
you can't even tell who. So the medicine is making people look different. And then we're, 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 when, we're all, when I was in Malaysia, this guy came and he's walking, he's all skinny, he's got these skinny forearms and huge biceps like that. And then one of the guys goes, it's synthol, it's called, it's a special type of, well, not special, probably poison, it's a type of uh, steroid or whatever, they put it into the arm and it just makes the arm swell. It looks abnormal. It inflames the arm. There's an inflammation, just inflames it. The guy's arm ma was massive, his bicep, huge, but his forearm, <laughs> look, it just didn't look normal, you know? I don't know, he maybe gets a kick out of it, but medicine. So like the, that happened at the time of Sayyidina Isa. You know, the other day they put hands on a boy, mashallah. So all the things are out there. You don't need God. You've got medicine. You don't need Allah. You don't need, you don't need, you don't need faith. You've you got your own brain. You know, you, you can make up your own mind. You can make up your own religion. Oh, no, don't worry about religion. Don't worry about. And what I mean by I mean ethics, morals, actions. Don't worry about all that stuff. So all the fitan that came. Liwat and homosexuality in the time of Sayyidina Lut. Cheating people and, and ripping off people in the time of Sayyidina Shu'aib. All those things and um, uh, Thamud and, and Ad, the building of massive buildings and all those fitan. All the fitan of all the prophets. Magic. Mahag is magic normal. Last time I was with my niece and she's got a wand from uh, that movie, the snow ice movie. Frosted. Frozen, <laughs> she's got frozen, and uh, you know she's playing with the wand. I said, I, I said, Khulur, you know, come, come. You know that's magic. You know it's, it's haram for Muslims. You shouldn't do. She goes, oh, okay, Khulur. And then she went to her room and she's playing by it <laughs> because she's been inculcated with it. She's that's it. She's got, you know, got the dolls and whatever else and the music and that's it. So all those things we think it's not there, like abracadabra. It's a Assyrian word. It's a, it's a word of magic. It's not a it's, it's not a made up nothing. Idea. It's not yeah, it's not made up. It's not invented. There's something behind it. So all the fitan of all the ambiya, you know, all of them. They're all there. All of them in our time. So for for us, the truth is paramount in that sense. And wherever we with the said it's hikmah is dalat al Muslim. The wisdom wisdom. Is a lost thing of the believer. Wherever the believer finds wisdom, the believer takes it. So I'm, I'm saying all these things not to like depress you. Hopefully you're not depressed because we got a lot. When you got a lot, don't worry about all these things. All these things don't make a difference. When you got the Prophet of Allah in his path, what well, they need? He told us all these things were going to happen anyway. So that should only make our iman stronger. Was that whom? Iman. Wa rabbihim Increase their faith and they. Increase their reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because it's true. So I'm not making it's what Allah said's gonna happen at the end of time. Right? So for us, the more we call to truth, the less like we said last week, either you're called or you're a caller. The more you call to truth to Allah, the less you'll be called away from everything else. And inshallah azawajal, what will happen to you is the door the, that door of wara that we spoke about while back, the other chapter, the door of scrupulousness will, will slowly seep and creep into your life. It will slowly overtake your life. The things that used to be important to you will become less important to you and eventually have no... I was talking to a brother the other day. He, this guy used to love movies. He's got, he watched every movie. And I, was, I said, oh, yeah, yeah, this, that, whatever. You know, we've seen any good movies lately. He's like, I can't watch movies anymore because he's, he's practicing his deen. He wants to go to Umrah. He can't, he can't afford to go to Hajj, he wants to go to Umrah, he's changing his life. He goes, I, I tried to watch this movie the other day and I couldn't even watch it. So, it's, why? Because his demands increased. The reality of the world around him, around him has become more apparent to him. So, the falsehood is also more apparent when the reality is more apparent. So, this is the time. Okay, don't, don't back down. Keep close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if the fitan become that great, in the area you're in and people are rejecting truth, then it's time to go. And the Prophet said it, where are we going to go? At the end of times, where are we going? <laughs> Sham. <laughs> right, well, you can't go now. <laughs> and everyone's going to go there. That's later, not now. All right? Later, everyone's going to end up there. Or Yemen as well. There's some, there's some words about Yemen. In the end, even that, that's not going to be enough. Mecca or Medina or the mountains. Well, that's it. There's no choice after that. There's no, that's when the things have become really, really, really bad.
Maybe that's when Trump gets in. I don't know. All right, whenever that time, whenever that time comes, then that time, the, the people of, of belief, they'll know. The people who are who have proximity. See why proximity is so important? We have proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They'll know. They'll know, inshaAllah.